Welcome everyone. In this video I will show you another use of uh, rotary encoders and uh, I will show you how you can build a very simple menu or menu system and how you can navigate uh, in the menu. So I will uh, give you some advices or some guidelines how you can uh, work out your own uh, menus and own system. So as you can see there is a very humble setup on the desk so we have this 16 by 2 uh, LCD. This is the very cheap rotary encoder. So you can rotate it and you can also use it as a push button. So it clicks. And we will use both function of this rotary encoder. So we will use the knob function of it. And also we will use the button function of it. And for the demonstration, I will use five different LEDs. So from the left, uh, we have a white and then a blue, green, yellow, and finally a red LED. And the purpose of them, uh, you will see it, but basically I will just uh, switch them on and off. And uh, that will demonstrate uh, how you can uh, enter uh, the menu or exit the menu or uh, perform something. So that's what we have. And uh, they are just uh, controlled by the digital pins of an Arduino Uno. And uh, so the Arduino Uno will um, provide the 5 volts. And then uh, there is a resistor between the negative side of the LED and the ground. And that's what uh, all... And that's basically the wall circuit here. So the Arduino is down here. I have a sort of an extension board with a uh, very small uh, prototype board here. So I could put together these things on a very tiny space and that's very nice. So let me show you uh, how this works by connecting this to a power supply. So I just have my mobile charger here. And then I hope that you can see the screen uh, properly. So I accidentally touched this uh, thing and sometimes uh, yeah, the button is not the best and the jumps. So yeah, but now everything is off. And what you can see here is basically white, uh, blue, green, yellow, red. And this is click. The CRK is not clock, but click here. And it will just uh, give you the number of clicks. And the number of clicks here is the uh, click caused by the rotation because between each uh, let's say fixed point of this uh, rotary encoder there is a click uh, so when you rotate this knob you can you can feel a click and that's what I count here so what I do here and what is the concept and I will of course uh, show you the drawing of the of the connections so the schematic layout and also I will show you the source code, but first uh, let's just talk about it. So what I want to show you here is basically that, for example, now we represent the uh, menu or options, uh, the different levels or the different options in, in the menu, we represent them by the uh, LED lights. And uh, what I will do is that I will step in this menu by rotating the rotary encoder and I will enter or exit by clicking the button. So for example, uh, in this example, that will look like that uh, I turn on or off a certain LED. So what we see here now is that the CRK equals zero and that means that uh, we are in the zero position because you know that in uh, programming language is uh, the zero is the first uh, place or the first uh, level. So here we are actually uh, standing in the W part. So if I click once, then the white LED should turn on if it works properly. So sometimes uh, I have some problems with this rotary encoder, but yeah, you could see that I turn on the LED. We are still at uh, the same spot and now this turned uh, turned up so now it's one and if I click again and if it works properly then the LED should uh, shut down and this will go to zero so let's see what happens 
So this is it. So now I increase uh, this number to one by uh, rotating the uh, rotary encoder by one click. So this is now at one. So we uh, hypothetically uh, stepped into the new uh, option in the in the menu, and that is the B. So we are uh, we are going to turn on the uh, blue LED if I click uh, the button. So now it's on and uh, yeah so when it's on uh, that means that I changed the value of a variable and that's one simple thing that you can do in the Arduino code but you can also enter a function or what I did here is basically I changed the status of the uh, leg which is connected to the LED so from low I switched it to high and that means that I turned on. But for example, if you have a relay, uh, you can uh, control relays with uh, uh, this similar strategy. So you just turn the relay on by uh, activating one of the pins, which you have connected uh, to the relays. And for example, you can turn on the light in your room or turn on the heating if you have some electric heating and so on. It's up to your fantasy. So now let's uh, go to... CRK number three so we jump and, and leave this on so since we changed the value uh, of a variable which is related to the LED it doesn't matter if we step away so now I go to CRK three and that should mean that uh, we are at zero one two three so we are at the Y uh, step and that is the yellow LED so if I click the button and it accepts my click then uh, we will turn on the yellow uh, LED and it's on. Now we have changed uh, the Y value to one, which means that uh, it is turned on. And let's finally just turn on the red, red uh, LED just for fun. So now the clock is four. Uh, so now the CRK is four and that is uh, the fifth LED because we started from zero. So let's turn it on. And it's on. And now if I click again, then I wrote the software in such a way that uh, if the software sees that uh, the value of the clicks is larger than four, it re-initializes uh, the value and it says that no, it is zero. So it goes uh, in, in a ring basically or in a circle. So when uh, this value becomes uh, when this value would become five, instead of that, it goes to zero and it works the other way around. So if I uh, decrease the value of this thing and I stop at zero, and if I would do another click uh, towards the negative uh, direction, then instead of entering to the negative uh, range and would change to minus one, it will go to four. And let me show it to you. So now it's three, two, one, zero should be now yes and now instead of minus one it should go to four and it's four now uh, and this is a very very simple if uh, else condition or statement so i will show you how to how to write this but this is basically how you can like go round and round uh, in a menu so let's say you have a few options and you are at the end of the list and you don't want to step back uh, but when you step to the next uh, item which is basically stepping out from the menu in that sense that uh, there are no more items in in your list then it would just jump back to the first item and i think that's very comfortable because if you have let's say 10 items and you are at the position number eight then you don't want to step back that uh, eight steps to the first but you want to just step two downwards and you will end up uh, on the top so that's what happens here and uh, also in the other way so if you want to go to the position number nine from the position number one, then you just have to go backwards and it will be there uh, much more quickly. So now we have two LEDs off. So let's turn them on as well. So now I go to zero and then I turn it on. So you see that the white LED is on and I have to go to number two here. So CRK equals two. 
I turn it on and it's on. So everything is on now. And now I, I just uh, turn this thing and nothing happens, of course, because we are just uh, uh, stepping uh, through the uh, legs, but we are not activating anything. So now let's turn off the uh, CRK equals four. So that will be the red. And then let's go two steps uh, backwards just to practice this uh, thing. So this should be the green and let's turn it off and then let's go back to the blue one. So that's number one. I turn it off. That's off. Let's go to the yellow one and let's go to the white one in the positive direction. So four and zero. So it's done. So this was basically the board demonstration, what I want, what I wanted to show you. And I will explain a bit more uh, details during the part where I show you the code. Of course, it will be in this video as well. So yeah, I just wanted to show you that uh, you can build a very good menu or very good uh, structure of menu on a very small screen. So of course, uh, you don't have to use something like this. But for example, if you would have a long list, then uh, at every third line, so when you would uh, print the third line after printing two here, uh, you just have to redraw the wall screen and uh, just put here uh, in the first line, the line number three and line number four. And then if you would uh, jump to the line number five, then you redraw the wall screen and you put the line number five here and the six here and so on and so on. So you just uh, scroll through the list, but uh, at the same time, uh, you just print uh, two lines on the screen. And by this, uh, you can uh, do this very easily. What I do here is I print these letters and then I never touch them. I only rewrite uh, the numbers here and that's all. And I don't uh, uh, update the screen only if I uh, update one of the values, but uh, not in any other cases. So it's not updating continuously because we are not doing anything which uh, requires like a continuous attention or continuous uh, updating. So here we just simply work with this uh, occasional updates when we do something with the rotary encoder. So basically when we yeah, turn on one of the LEDs. So yeah, uh, I think it will make more sense if I show the code uh, to you and I will show you the drawing. I, I will try to make this drawing, uh, of course, not on this uh, breadboard, but on a different breadboard. It doesn't really matter because at the end, I think you will uh, use something else instead of using LEDs. But uh, yeah, as I said, you can turn on and off anything with this. It's up to your imagination. So if you want to turn on a relay or a motor or both, yeah, you have a lot of pins available and uh, you can do whatever you want. You can turn on uh, PWM, you can turn on or off uh, the measurement via the analog pins and so on. So let's jump to the code and let's see what happens inside the Arduino. So let's look at the code now. So you could see the display and the rotary encoder that uh, they were working nicely. So this is the library for the LCD. And you can see that the data is the A4 and the clock is the A5. And this is just a general uh, I squared C connection. So all the I squared C devices are connected this way. And then we have uh, pins for the ro rotary encoder. So we have the CRK, the DT and the SW. And you can see that the CRK and the SW are attach interrupt compatible pins. So the two and three pins are uh, made for that purpose. And then we need some variables. So what I did here, I have a button counter and that will be basically the counter for the clicks of the button. So whenever you press, you increase the value of this and the same for the rotate counter. So whenever you make a click by rotating the uh, encoder, you will increase the value of uh, this uh, variable. And then there is a Boolean value for the rotated and also for the button pressed. Uh, they are quite self-explanatory. And what I have, I have to save the status 
of the CRK and the DT uh, pins. So I will uh, store them in these va variables. I need some timers. So I will have a time now one and time now two. And I have the LED things. So these are the uh, definitions of the of the digital pins here for the white, blue, green, yellow, and red LEDs. And also I, I need their status as well, whether they are on or off. And I will take care of those by um, storing them in a Boolean uh, variable. And in the beginning they are false because they will be off. And I made a small sketch, a small drawing of the display. So you could see something like this. So white, blue, green, yellow, red, CRK, and then five zeros and one. Uh, this will be basically the layout. So here we can start the serial, but I'm not using it. So I delete this or comment this. And we start the LCD, uh, the, the backlight of it. And then we put the cursor on the zero, zero position. So the upper left corner of the 16 by two LCD. And we print this thing, which I was uh, drawing or writing down here. And then we move to the next line, but we still keep uh, on the left side of the screen. And then we just print out the zeros and we wait uh, three seconds and then we define the pins. So all of these will be using the uh, input uh, pull up resistors. So the internal uh, pull up resistors. So two, three, four pins are all defined like this. And then the LED pins are outputs, of course. And after defining them as outputs, we also turn them to low. And here we have to read the uh, status of the CRK and the DT uh, pins of the rotary encoder. So that's what we do there. So we will see if they are high or low and we store them as like the previous states because we will compare the next status to these when, when they are moved. So this is when they are not moved. And then we start with these attach interrupts so for the rotate, we always look for change, whether it is going high to low or low to high, because we want to distinguish between these two. And that's why we look for change. And uh, for the button, uh, we always keep the button on high uh, by default. And we, when we press the button, it will be pulled down to ground. So we are looking for a falling uh, edge of the square wave, basically. And we start the time now one uh, timer and that's all. And the loop here is very, very simple. So we have the print LCD and the button checker uh, functions. Now let's see the print uh, LCD. That should be very uh, simple. So here what is happening is if uh, the rotated uh, boolean is true. So if we rotated uh, the uh, rotary encoder, then we increase the counter uh, in the corner. And that is basically the CRK. So if you go back here, so we will update this number. And uh, then we just uh, set this to false. So then uh, if we just uh, have the Arduino on, but we don't touch anything, then this loop will run, uh, but it will not update the screen unnecessarily. So for example, there won't be any flickering of the screen because if you update the screen too frequently, then it will have this blinking or flickering effect. So then we turn off and we will never ever enter this part of the code if this is false. And that's, that's very good. So then uh, let's see what is this button checker. And that is down here. And that is one of the difficult uh, parts, but it's not that difficult. So uh, if we press the button and later on, I will show you how this becomes uh, true. If we uh, press uh, the button, then this variable becomes true. And then I put a switch case uh, statement here. So what I did is, as you can see, we have numbers. So zero, one, two, and it goes to four. And that is five in total. And that is the number of LEDs. And this is what I tried to explain you uh, during the demonstration that if I uh, rotate the count, uh, if I rotate the encoder, 
then uh, we start from zero we go to four and that that is happening here and then if i keep it uh, rotating then after four zero will come so then what this does is we read the value of the rotate counter and based on that we enter uh, one of these cases and I just uh, explain one and all the others will work like that. So the case number zero belongs to the white LED. So we see that if the status of the white LED is false, so if that was basically the previous state of that, then uh, we uh, turn it to true and first of all we just uh, turn the status to true and then we write it uh, with the digital write from low to high so this means that uh, basically that the white LED is uh, turned on otherwise so if the white LED status is true then the, then we change the status again so uh, the white LED status will be false and this will be low. So what happens here is the white LED is turned off. And then at the end of this, so whether this is happening or this is happening, we change the uh, display, change the value on the display. So we go to the designated spot and we just print the status so basically this and if it's false it's a zero if it's true it's a one and that's how we manipulate uh, sorry these numbers so i was discussing this number here and then uh, the following things are going like that uh, are going in the same way so we just see if the number is one then that means that uh, we are standing here and then if we click the button we will change it from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0 and the LED will turn off or turn on according to the current value of this thing but uh, how did we end up uh, with this button pressed uh, stuff so let's uh, make that uh, the following thing oh and yes sorry before that, so we go through all of these cases and then at the end we have to uh, reset the button pressed value to false uh, because otherwise the, we would always enter this uh, switch case and in that case the LED would flicker again because then it would always read uh, the status and it would always uh, rewrite the screen so that's not good we want to avoid that but uh, how did we end up with this button pressed uh, thing so that is basically here and that originates from here so when you press the button we trigger this uh, interrupt and we enter this function so this is the button pressed as you can see here and here and we start another timer and I will tell you why but uh, I also brought it here, so it's a software debounce. You cannot click the button too quickly. You have to wait half a second. And why? I did this uh, because sometimes if I press the button, uh, it is bouncing. And uh, I tried it with capacitors and stuff, but it was not uh, uh, stopping. I could not uh, get rid of the bouncing, so what I did I just introduced this uh, small function here and it's not complicating uh, too many things in this interrupt because you should make this very simple uh, you should not do too many things in the in the interrupt function but here there, there are not too many things but what we mainly do is that we change the button pressed uh, value to true and that's all and if it's true then when we check the button with the function which is running in the main loop then we will do something according to that so so this is all and then we have the rotate function left another interrupt function and this function is also uh, very easy so we read what was the uh, CRK now 
when we triggered uh, this this guy here and then we save it and we see if it was like the previous and in the very very first time the previous was uh, basically initialized here and it was saved uh, in this moment so when you started your Arduino so let's say that uh, we are now uh, started starting the Arduino and then we rotate the uh, rotary encoder for the first time so then we read it once here and then we read it again and then we compare these two because the comparison will uh, allow us to know whether we were moving in one or the other direction so we we see what what happened uh, with the CRK and then we also read the current status of the DT and based on these two conditions so this outer and internal or inner uh, if uh, statements we will see if we have to uh, increase the value of the rotate counter or decrease the value of the rotate counter and then we have to reset the CRK uh, value or store it and I also changed uh, this part to true so the code the rest of the code uh, will know for example the print LCD that we rotated the uh, rotary encoder so that basically that if we rotated we either increased or decreased the value of the rotate counter and that will be updated uh, right here and what you can see here is then this rotate function is an interrupt function and I'm doing some things here so there is a lot of yeah, first of all there is a digital read there and uh, things like that but as I noticed it doesn't really interfere with the Arduino so you can keep this here maybe these things can be moved out but uh, I, I kept it like this if you accept it you can use it or if you don't you can improve it even you can let me know in the comments if you found some better way to uh, tackle this uh, set of uh, actions but for me it works fine and I'm quite satisfied with it and I'm not a programmer so I can allow myself to have such a crappy code uh, yeah so now we learned how to increase or decrease the number of this variable and based on this variable we will do some stuff and also the uh, rotate counter will bring us back to this uh, button checker because we press the button and uh, that will just allow us to enter this part of the code and then based on the rotate counter that we changed with uh, these things here uh, we will enter the different cases based on what is the actual value of the rotate counter so that that how the switch uh, case works and based on those let's say it's three then we know that we have to modify the yellow LED and that will be modified based on the previous state so if it's on then we turn it off if it's off then we turn it on and we follow the status of it as well via a, a variable which is a boolean so either it is one or zero so yeah this was all uh, it's not that complex uh, just 200 something uh, lines 250 let's say so it's a quite uh, short code and it does a lot of job I would say uh, it's quite useful and what I wanted to s uh, show you with this that if you want to build up this menu or you want to have a list that you want to scroll through is basically you just uh, observe the uh, magnitude of this number or the value of this number and you can write quite a long uh, switch case I think that's more elegant than writing an if else or a lot of ifs so you just uh, make a switch case and basically this is the menu and uh, inside this these cases because this is running in the main loop you can have uh, like sub uh, functions let's say so you write another function like uh, these kind of things and uh, put it here and basically this is like if it would be a stepper motor then uh, you would start the stepper motor here and you would stop the stepper motor here and you can do it uh, just by using one button and uh, and the rotary encoder so it, it's very easy 
and you can also like constantly reprint uh, the things on the LCD and so on and so on. So you can let's say have a text and scroll through the text uh, by this kind of things and uh, a lot of other things. Maybe I will work a bit more on this kind of topic if you are interested, let me know and I will try to explain it to you in more uh, details how, how to deal with these kind of things. But it's quite easy, you just have to make sure that you have a variable that you increase or decrease with your rotary encoder and based on the value of that variable you enter different uh, cases here and you perform different tasks uh, based, based on those uh, values or based on those yeah, items in the list. So this was all. I hope you learned something and I, I hope that this was uh, useful to you. I think the, this can be a quite a uh, cool project. Uh, I have a website which is curiousscientist.tech so please uh, visit it, look around if you find something interesting. Also let me know in the comments if you uh, need some extra information or if you need some help I will try to answer them and please don't forget to subscribe it helps me a lot and see you in the next video